birth. Welcome to the broadcast today. This is your word for today. And I'm just believing today that God is just going to draw a line in the, in the sand for you. You know, he's going to really bring you into a deeper place than you've ever been in your whole life. Sometimes you've got to go into a deeper place to get a deeper healing. Sometimes the next step to getting well is you making a step more towards a deeper place of surrender, a deeper place of commitment. It's not just quoting a healing verse. Sometimes there's more required of us, our life. You know, because God's after you. He's not just after you getting a healing. He's after the wholeness of you. I mean, before you were in your mother's womb with all the body parts and all the components, He knew you. And you had a blueprint, a, a schematic, a plan. And He wants to be sure that that plan comes to fruition. fruition. He said in Philippians 1.6, uh, He who began a good work in you, He's not going to work through you until he works in you. To what extent you let God work in you, he will work through you. Then he can trust you more. He will trust you more when his work in you is allowed to take place. Oh, this is exciting. Let's go to our Bibles today, to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6. We've got a couple of verses we're going to read here, 5, 6, and 7. It says this, but as the one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. What was borrowed? The axe head. And the man of God said, Where did it fell? Where did it fall? And he showed him the very place in the river. And he, and he cut down a stick. He cast it into the river, and the axe head began to swim. And therefore said he, take it up to thee. And he put out his right hand, and he took it. Come on, all of you that are watching today, say, I'm going to take it. Come on, say, when that thing surfaces again, I'm just going to take back the axe head that I lost. But more than lost, it was the axe head that you borrowed. What made the prophet, Elisha, take such interest in this axe head that came off of one of the sons of the prophet's handle. Why was Elisha so drawn to that incident? Was it just that, hey, we need one more worker, every worker counts, you know, and you lost your axe head, so we're minus a worker, and we're not gonna get, no, 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 a thousand times no. What was it that attracted Elisha to this incident? It was the value that this man, this prophet, the value he put on something that wasn't his own. Something that was borrowed. Because he said, I lost the axe head, and right after that, it is a borrowed axe head. That's so connected with Elisha the prophet. And the Bible teaches, if you value another man, you'll value what God has for you. That's over in Luke chapter 16 right here. If you value somebody else's, then you'll have a personal value for your own or, or for what God has for you. But your, your core value system that we all have, some to a greater, some to a lesser degree, but it's ever-changing. It doesn't have to stay the same. As we grow, as we get more exposed to the anointing and, and what God has and and we, that glory that we all experience, this written word, as we get these promises inside of us, our values will change. They should. But this man said, I lost something that was not mine. I value that borrowed accent. You know, in life, as you go through the journey of being a believer, there's so many things that before they become real in you, you're going to have to borrow them from somebody else. I mean, you know, you have to borrow somebody else's testimony. You don't have one yet. Or so you think, but you, you borrow someone else's habits. You know, how they read the Word of God every day, how they, you know, how they be a better husband or better wife, a better father. 
And you're going to, before the, the Word is uniquely formed in you, and, and the flow of the Spirit that moves through you, before that all becomes original to you, you know, we all kind of like borrow from people that we regard or we respect or we like. You know, it's valuable. It's valuable because at the time you didn't have that. You couldn't study enough for that. It just doesn't happen. Most of this stuff in here doesn't happen overnight. This is, is, this is the commitment to the process. The most valuable things of the kingdom. What would the Apostle Paul say in chapter 3 of Philippians? He said, the things that used to be important to me. He was in the house of interpretation. He was in the house of book. Uh, he was raised in the Pharisee among Pharisees. This guy was brilliant with Jewish custom and Jewish law. And now he's saying, I count that as dung. The things that are most precious to me now. But that didn't happen immediately, it didn't happen overnight. But it did happen. And sometimes as we, not sometimes, but it should as we grow, as we are ever so exposed to that wonderful presence, this written word, as we sit in more worship services, as we, you know, as we meditate on these scriptures, there should be, oh, there should be bark coming off the tree. There should be a renewal. We should be in a different place, relocated. But I'll tell you what, until then, until then, we borrow. And sometimes we don't realize how much that has made a difference in our life until we realize, I don't know that, so I borrow his. And then we, when we share that, that experience, something in our prayer life, something in our worship life, something in our daily Christian life, our faith, and we benefit from it. And we go, wow, that wasn't mine. I borrowed, yeah, I grew up borrowing my grandmother's faith. I didn't know I was borrowing her faith. I was raised in a house where I saw so many, so many wonderful supernatural things. I just began to, that was a normal thing for, to happen in and around my grandmother. So I would just borrow those. I lived off of the, the spray of that, the overflow of that. I didn't have any of that, but I was connected to it. I told her stories. I told Catherine Kuhlman stories or, or Oral Roberts stories. And today I tell people, you know, whoever I, I'm exposed to and I say, that's a gift, that's an anointing. It's not my story, but if I can use their story and borrow their story to help somebody, I will. And I've done that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. If you have confidence and trust in the integrity of that person, But you got to value it. It's got to mean something to you. I never went to the cross. So I borrow the story of the cross. I never shed my blood. I was never tied to a whipping post. I was never beaten with 39 plus stripes of the cat of nine tails. I was never dead for three days and I was never came out of a grave. None of that is mine, but I borrow it. I borrow all of that, and He lets me borrow that. He just wants me to use it correctly. Borrow my story, Billy, and tell them about I was beaten, I was bruised. Tell them about my stripes and tell them about my desire to heal them. Tell them about the new beginning that's available to them. Borrow what happened to me. And someday, you know, as you grow in faith, as you grow in expectation, and all of stuff comes your way, and all of a sudden, you begin to borrow that name to get from the master. Now it's yours. Now it's yours. You used his name to get your own story. You used his blood to get your own freedom. You used and borrowed his stripes to get your own breakthrough. 
And so it's, it's important today that we understand that something borrowed from a bowl of sugar, how could you have made that cake? You didn't have enough money, you didn't have access to the store, but that precious neighbor lady come over and said, here, borrow some of my sugar. I remember when I first moved here to Tampa Bay, a, a pastor friend came and he said, we don't have enough chairs. We're having a big event here in the city and we don't have enough chairs. Can we borrow some of your chairs, Pastor Billy? I said, take as many chairs as you want. That church grew to thousands. And I, I watched that chair grow to thousands and I thought, my God, I remember the day that he borrowed some of my chairs. And it made me feel good. I thought, wow, I really have a piece of that success story because I left him borrow. It's not wrong to borrow, you know, as long as the idea that you have is I, I want to get my own someday. I want to carry my own, get my own shadow. I want to have my own presence. And any good father in faith or mother in the Lord would, would be happy for you to do that. Anything less than that would reveal a very insecure leader. Our job is to pass away, take a back stage, take a back step, push everybody forward. And sometimes that comes early in life, sometimes it comes later, but it usually comes. See, God has something for you today that you may not have. You may not have enough faith to believe for what you need to believe for. Whatever the reason, we don't even need to get into that. But I'm telling you today, you can borrow some. You don't have enough knowledge, maybe. That's why people go to Bible schools and ministry schools, just to learn more and more, because they, they don't know enough yet to, to get the strength behind them to do what they want to do and be who they want to be and receive what they want to receive. So they go and they go to a professor or this great teacher or this pastor of a church and he's teaching. And, and oh my, like when you're sitting at the feet of Brother Copeland, or the, the time that we all have enjoyed with Gloria, teaching all of those wonderful principles of healing and strength, what they have done to revolutionize people's lives. You didn't study for that, she did. You didn't speak that into existence, she did. So whether it was Gloria Copeland or my grandmother or, or your pastor down the road, we're all learning stuff that is never ours in the beginning. But all the joy of whenever we finally, it locks in, and it's now my revelation. Now that knowledge that I borrowed has become revelation to me. Like the day that Peter said to Jesus, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Oh, Peter, you wouldn't know that. That revelation, except the Holy Spirit had revealed it personally to you. I believe this year God's about to make some revelation out of some information. He's about to take some of the knowledge you have and just turn it into a revelation that's going to make things manifest for you. You've been standing so long on such a promise, standing in one line after another, calling one prayer line after another. You've gotten touched and partially healed. And, you know, you've gotten encouraged and, you know, gotten excited but the manifestation has been escaping you. Not this year, not this year. Watch this word in 2024 on the shores of more. Listen to me, that's what's coming your way. It's just because God is gonna honor your faithfulness and he's gonna honor the fact that you have valued what's been borrowed. I remember the first time I went to pray for somebody and my grandmother, I was going out the door and she said, here, take this, little, take this little flask of oil with you. It was a little white wooden bottle that Oral Roberts had sent all of his partners. Well, my grandmother was a partner with Catherine and Rex and Oral and you know, she was, she brought all of that. She pipelined that into, the, into our home. And I remember she gave me that little white flask of oil. And I went to this lady's house who was dying and I went to anoint her head with oil, and the Holy Spirit showed up. I was like, wow, what's this? He just showed, and he talked to me. I heard him. I actually heard him. He said, dump the whole flask on her. 
And so instead of doing like this, I just dumped everything right on this lane. I thought, I'm, and the daughter came running in. She said, what are you doing? I said, the Holy Spirit told me to do this. She said, how would he tell you to do that? She's helpless laying there. Well, she wasn't laying there for long. She sat up by the side of the bed. And then she got up and walked. And the daughter said, what are you doing, mother? She said, I'm walking like a healed woman. I'm telling you this, that sometimes we take for granted of all of the people that cut down the trees for you. And you borrow their information, you borrow their touch, you borrow their anointing. You borrow it. And that's why Elisha was so connected to this man. His revere, his honor, his value in something that did not belong to him. He didn't want to lose it because he valued it so much. Alas, it's borrowed. It's good to know what you have earned or what you've, you've worked for and what's in your life because of your study and your prayers. But it's also good to know I learned that from him and I got that touch from her. And those people there helped me see this. And, and it's good to know that, that borrowed and to value it. Oh, I so value so much more today than I did many years ago. Many years ago, you take something just to move on. You know, you, to go further down the road, to know more about them, to know more about the healing power, to know more about the love of, and all of that. But one day you, you stop and you realize, how did I get here? How do I know all of this? When did this all begin, people ask me. When and why did you see these miracles? And I say to people, honestly, I say, let me think about that. And the Holy Spirit's always right there. And he always says, be very careful what you say. Don't you dare make it look like this was yours from the beginning. Because it was not. You borrowed it. You borrowed it and you liked it so much that you took ownership. You liked it so much. You did find it, and we do lose it, but you did find it not to return it. You found it to keep it. God wants you to find today. There's some things you've borrowed through the years to get you where you are. You know, that you've borrowed that confidence from somebody, and you've borrowed that, that sharp thing in your personality that's so amazing from somebody, and how to pray, and how to tithe, and you know, what's some things you should do priority-wise in your family? But today God is saying, I want you to really take ownership of that. What's the Bible say in this story here? That ax head came floating up and he what? He grabbed it. Today God wants you to grab that part that you may not have thought was too valuable. Does that happen to you? Do you ever look back and think, wow, I, now I know what grandma was saying. Now I know what my father meant. Now I get what my wife was trying to say to me. Now I understand what the manager of my store, I get it. Oh, how could I not see it then? They borrowed something. You borrowed something from them and now you're seeing, wow. Wow, grab it today. Grab today and say, thank you, Lord, for the price, grandmother, that manager, that pastor, that church. Grab it today and say, thank you. Thank you that you paid the price to get something to me that at the time, when something is borrowed, you don't pay any price. Somebody that you borrow it from has paid the price. It's your turn now to carry it. To carry it is just as expensive as to getting it. This could be the best day of the rest of your life. At least the best day for the rest of this year. Because God loves you and you're needed in this hour. Your love is needed. Your light is needed. Your testimony of what he's done for you is needed. Because people are people. And people watch people while you're watching the Master, while you're watching these words of this glorious gospel. People are watching you. Guess what you're going to do this year? 
you're going you're gonna to zone things out. Here's some love. Try this. Here's some healing. Try this. Here's some, here's some prosperity. Try this. And they're going to borrow from you. And when they borrow from you, guess what happens? They see that it's real. Hey, that prosperity stuff works. That, that healing stuff works. And all roads lead to Jesus. All roads. Today, be thankful today that you have lived on borrowed of so many things from so many people. It's gotten you where you are. But as you go forward, God's going to turn what was borrowed into ownership, where you can become what? The lender and no longer the borrower. That's what the Bible says. You become the lender. That's not just about money. That's about presence and anointing and knowledge and understanding. Get ready, my friend. Your year, your hour of distribution is upon you. Father, bless the people, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Let's go see a miracle in the most recent crusade. I have been suffering from hypertension, arthritis, diabetes, degenerate fatty brain. I can hardly walk. Power! What's your guess? What's your dress? Oh my God! She's kicking something up here. Jesus! Jesus! What? What happened? No pain? It's gone? Get the mic on. It's good. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I've been watching you on TV and on the telecast. They had advertised this meeting in Toronto. And I said to myself, I should be there. I will be there. I will get healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Yes, I am. I'll tell you what, it's so amazing to, you know, I, I, I never f forgot those year, early years in my ministry where I would tell other people's stories. And I would say, and like I said, I don't want to name all the names. You would probably know most of them. And I would make sure I would either ask them or sometimes I just, because I trusted who they were and what their story was, or I read it in one of their books. It was so rewarding to see that help them. But the day whenever I began, to not have to borrow that. The day that I had my own stories. I saw that lady's hair change colors. I saw those lumps leave that body. I saw that paralyzed man walk out of that wheelchair. Because I was so excited to share the glory that happened to others, and I borrowed it to help people, God shined His love upon this ministry. And it left me begin to see some things. Somewhere in there, it's all about earning the trust of the Master. Learning the trust of Jesus. Can you tell the story without embellishing it? Can you tell the story without it being all about you? Can you tell a story where you really deeply feel God's at the center of it? All roads don't point to you. All road points to Him. He's the glory and the lifter of my head. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. When those, when those principles, when those staples become rooted in you, then God can trust you with more. I know you want to be trusted. I know that I, uh, trustworthiness is something that escapes a lot of us for a long time. 
until you're willing to allow him to help you become more trustworthy. With what? With his presence, with the glory, with the scriptures, with your testimony, with money. I'm going to pray today that, that there's going to be a work of grace hit your life. That's going to enable you to say, i got to be found trustworthy. If I'm faithful in the small, if I can be trusted with a little, if I, if I can manage that which He's given me within my measure, then I'm going to trust Him to expand and expound and stretch forth my place of habitation. Let's pray that. Master, I pray today that you touch our dear partners and friends. They would just be entrusted with more, more grace, more breakthroughs, more opportunities, more strength, more knowledge more moments of ministry experience, that we may be found faithful, trustworthy, to handle the goodness of God. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I, you know, I, I, I just believe that God is, is shining His face upon you today. And write me, would you, would you really pray by becoming a, a, a partner with this ministry? You know, we really, need to hear from a few of you here today. We, we have so much we want to do this year and we need some extra help to pull in, help us with the harvest. Would you do that today? This is the, all that's on the screen, our social media platforms are on the screen, our schedule for this month is on the screen. Get into one of our services. I'd love to meet you, I'd love to hug you. Love you to see you get a miracle. So until then, next week or here on the internet, remember, without, with God, Mark 10, 27, with God, all things are possible. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Do you desire more understanding of the miraculous and a deeper walk with the Lord? Enroll today in Pastor Billy's Miracle Mentorship Program, a weekly online on-demand video discipleship class. For just $19.97 a month, you can join Pastor Billy for a weekly video lesson featuring teaching from God's Word to build faith and expectation, Mentorship moments about Pastor Billy's journey in ministry. Group question and answer sessions with Pastor Billy. Miracle analysis demonstrating what happens during the process of a miracle and more. Examining the process of building a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Enroll today at MiracleMentorship.com slash registration or by calling 888-743-2533.